Great. So like today, I would like to talk about a Tulak, a Tulak contest. And um, yeah, in this uh, contest, it's a case that two or more uh, athletes are competing. Uh, they try to win the contest in order to get the prize money. And uh, we'll look at more or less like two different scenarios. Uh, one scenario is like a symmetric uh, end player to lock contest, which implies that uh, we have more than two players, but the players are all similar. They have the same characteristics, and then we are able to model more than two players. Uh, in the end, I will talk about an asymmetric n player uh, uh, Tula contest where n is restricted to two. So um, uh, we are dealing with two players, but they are modeled asymmetric uh, so that the two players are different. Um, this kind of stuff is important in order to understand, for example, the doping literature. In the doping literature, uh, the authors, they want to find out how does doping affect the effort level? Is it, for example, the case that doping will increase the effort level of the athletes? Uh, or is it the case that doping uh, will decrease the effort levels? Uh, what does it imply for the um, winning probabilities and overall um, outcome of this contest. Uh, therefore, like today, really the very basic stuff with respect to this Tula context. I'll uh, try to share my slides now. So I mentioned already after a short introduction, uh, we'll look at an N player uh, Tula contest. Uh, but all the um, players are modeled in a symmetric way. And then we look at the special case where the two uh, players are asymmetric, the two players are different. Let's switch to the introductory part. The, so when it comes to competition processes, we can model this competition processes differently. So when it comes to a dual pole, for example, uh, we can model this kind of stuff as a Cournot competition. And then it is the case that the, the two companies are competing with the quantity. And it is the case that the two players are revealing uh, their optimal quantity at the very same point in time. So we have a simultaneous game. Um, Related to that is the Stackelberg uh, duopoly. In this uh, case, we also talk about quantity competition. So the two players are using the quantity in order to compete, but it's a sequential game. And the player who is allowed to move first has a first mover advantage and will uh, in the end produce and opt for a higher quantity compared to the second mover. So uh, there is a first mover advantage and this results in a higher, um, uh, higher, yeah, um, higher amount of goods produced and also higher amount of profit. Uh, in a Berton competition, it's also the case that we can model it as a duopoly. There, uh, the two competitors use the price as um, the me uh, metrics to compete on. And um, this, uh, um, pros this competition is characterized by a situation where in the end, um, we have a very, very tough competition and the two companies will not make a profit at all. So in the end, the two companies will make a zero profit uh, which is, uh, um, in the end, the same market outcome compared to like perfect competition. Um, 
here and today we are looking at a contest and in this contest the two players uh, they excel effort and they are using the effort level as the measure to compete on um, also it could be the case that we talk about the money spent into this process the money spent into this contest um, where are these kind of contests important? For example, some kind of raffles uh, in, a, in a lottery situation. Uh, the success and the probability that you can win a lottery depends on the money you spend on lottery tickets. So uh, it is, uh, this contest is based on the effort, the money you put into the process. Or like a legal case, it also depends on how much money you spend on your lawyers, how large is your team of lawyers, uh, are you able to afford like very, very good lawyers, and then you have a higher chance to win uh, this uh, legal case. Or of course, also in sports competitions, it's a case that um, the outcome of a game uh, the outcome of a contest depends on uh, the effort the players are putting into uh, training. And uh, these effort levels will decide whether the one or the other um, uh, player will win the contest. So how does the contest look like? We are looking at N larger than uh, equal or larger than two players. Uh, we assume that each player chooses simultaneously an effort level, which is uh, smaller or equal to zero. And uh, it is the case that this, when, we, when the player is excelling effort, this will, lead, this will lead to cost. And the costs are also like positive. And the variable M represents the marginal cost. Marginal costs are equal to zero. So when we excel the level of E equal to one, then the costs are equal to M. When the effort level is equal to two, then uh, the overall costs are equal to two times M. I denotes uh, the index uh, of a player. So here we are looking at player number I. What are the desirable characteristics of a contest. Um, we need a contest success function. And this contest success function will map the vector of efforts taken to the probabilities of capturing the price or uh, to a pro uh, pro proportion of the price money. Uh, this uh, a uh, contest success function should have the following characteristics that each player's expected portion of the price should increase with its own effort. So when I put more effort into the process, the likelihood of winning the prize should be higher and my expected amount of prize money should be higher. Second characteristic is that each player's expected portion of price money should decrease in all other efforts. What does that imply? It implies that if all the other players I am competing against, if all the other players are increasing their effort, my expected profit should decrease. There are, of course, a lot of different ways how we can model uh, a contest which has these kind of characteristics, but the Tula contest is the most popular one. A player's expected share, the probability of winning uh, the competition is equal to his portion of the total effort. So, um, the winning probability of player I is equal to the effort level of player I divided by the effort level of all the other players. 
And then, uh, of course, it becomes clear that this kind of equation one will um, uh, map uh, these kind of characteristics because when I increase my own effort, then the winning probability will increase. But when all the other players are increasing their effort, then my winning probability will decrease. So this uh, kind of contest uh, is in line with the desirable characteristics of a contest. Then we have to think about the price money. Price money is positive. Okay, these are like the basic assumptions. And now we will switch like to the symmetric and player to lock contest. Symmetric implies that all players are identical, or all player, like plural of player is player. All player are identical and have identical marginal cost. Uh, player I's objective function is, uh, this is the utility function of player I. The revenues are given by uh, the probability of winning the prize money. So the probability is given by this fraction. Then prize money is given by V. So the first part, the first product, th these are the revenues. And then we also have to uh, subtract the cost, which is given by the last term, M times um, e, uh, EI, marginal cost times the effort level chosen by player I. Okay. Um, Sorry to yeah. interrupt, Professor. Uh, what is V in this equation? Uh, v is the value of the price money. Okay. The pot. Okay. Other questions? Okay, else. Like when you see a utility function, of course, the next step is to optimize the utility function. So we need a first order condition. We have to take a derivative of the utility function with respect to one parameter. And then we have to set this derivative equal to zero. We have to think about what is under control of player i. Under control of player i, is only the effort level of player I. So marginal costs M are exogenous, the size of the price money V is exogenous, and also like the effort level of all the other players. This is not under control of player I. So we have to differentiate the utility function uh, with respect to EI. There is a fraction here in the beginning of equation two, and therefore we have to use like the rule of differentiation, which is called like the quotient rule. So um, these are like uh, German abbreviations, doesn't make sense. Like uh, derivative, uh, Ableitung des Zellers mal Nenner minus Ableitung des Nenners mal Zeller durch Nenner zum Quadrat. So a derivative of the numerator divided by the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator and we divide by uh, the numerator squared. Okay, let's do that. Um, yeah, we differentiate the utility function with respect to the effort level of player i. Uh, the effort, the derivative of the denominator, uh, the derivative of the numerator is equal to one. So uh, the first part is one times the denominator which is this part. And then we have to say minus uh, the derivative of the denominator 
is also equal to one because of the fact that one of this effort level, one of these effort levels stems from individual i. And then we have to multiply through by uh, the numerator and the numerator is given by ei times v. So uh, this is the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. Uh, then we also square the denominator. And when we differentiate this part with respect to EI, we get a minus M minus the marginal cost. So this is the first derivative of the utility function with respect to EI. And we have to set the first derivative equal to zero. So this is our first order condition. On the next slide, um, we once more have the equation of the previous slide. And now we can check whether we can combine some terms. Uh, let's check. We have a V here and a V there. So two Vs pop up in the numerator. So we can write V out of bracket. And therefore, we have another minus uh, effort level of player i in uh, the brackets. In a symmetric equilibrium, it will be the case that all player excel the same amount of effort. Um, so e1 is equal to e2, is equal to e3, is equal to e4, is equal to en, is equal to e. Therefore, Equation four, um, the first order condition will become, uh, we have in the denominator, in the brackets, the sum of all effort levels. There are n different players. So the sum of all these effort, play, uh, uh, all these efforts, uh, can be written in the way n times e. So the denominator becomes n times e in brackets to the power of two. And then in the numerator, we have the same stuff, like the sum of all e's, like the sum of all player, uh, of all effort levels of all player. Um, so n times e also pops up in the numerator, but there is like one additional uh, e in the numerator with a negative sign. And this pops up here. Um, okay, on the next slide, I have just copy pasted the equation from the last slide. So let's focus on the left-hand side of this equation. Let's focus on this part of the equation. Uh, we can modify this part in the following way. Uh, we can also write E out of brackets in the numerator. When we write this E out of brackets, we get V times E and then in brackets, n minus one. Um, then we can also get rid of the uh, brackets in the denominator. In the denominator, we have n times e uh, to the power of two in brackets. When we get rid of the brackets, we get n squared, uh, times e squared in the denominator. And now we have an e in the numerator and an e squared in the denominator. So we can cancel out one e. And we arrive at this expression, uh, v times n minus one divided by n squared times e is equal to the marginal cost m. So we have modified the left-hand side of the first equation. 
And then we end up at equation number eight. In the last step, uh, we have to rearrange equation eight in a way that we isolate the effort level on one hand side of the equation because we are interested in the effort level. Like what is the optimal effort level? How much should one player put into training? Like how much effort should this player put into training? So we have to solve equation eight for the effort level E. That's relatively easy now. We can put the E on the right-hand side and we put the M on the left-hand side of this equation and we get to equation number nine. We have E on the left-hand side isolated and M pops up in the denominator of this fraction. So this is now the optimal effort level of one player. In the next step, I would like to give you some time to think about the following questions. Question number one, like what kind of components, which components influence the expected utility of a player? And question number two, um, there is a numerical example given. Price money is equal to 100, marginal cost equal to two, M is equal to two. And we only look at uh, two players, n is equal to two in scenario A. Uh, perhaps right now, forget about scenario B, focus on scenario A. And you should calculate like the optimal effort of a player, the optim the, you should calculate the optimal effort of a player, the probability of winning and the expected profit of a player. Do you have questions? Else I would like to team you up and I will switch to Excel in order to show you the solutions. So um, in a first step, we have to calculate the optimal effort level and the optimal effort level is given by equation number nine. So effort level is equal to, in brackets, uh, the price money uh, times um, N, which is uh, two uh, minus one. Uh, this is the numerator of equation number nine. And then we divide by uh, the product M in D6 uh, times uh, N squared. And effort level hopefully is 12.5. Great. Um, so you did not make calculations here. Also like 100% opted for 12.5. Now we have to think about the winning probability and winning probability is given by 12.5, uh, the effort level of one player divided by like N times the effort level. And it should be 0.5. And now the utility uh, here, it was a case that uh, the students had were like arguing whether it's one or whether it is uh, 25. So the utility level is given as uh, the probability, uh, like the first part is SI, the probability. Uh, this one uh, times uh, 100 minus the marginal cost times the effort level. And here, like the result should be 25. Great. So the majority of the students also got this one right. Our utility is 25. Like after we have set up this Excel sheet, we can easily 
uh, find the solution to scenario B. Because in scenario B, it will be the case that uh, one variable will change and will increase from two to five. Uh, check what happens. Uh, the effort level will decrease. Uh, the winning probability will also decrease. And also the utility one player can uh, receive out of this contest will decrease. Let's increase n even further. From 10 uh, to 100, uh, the effort level decreases, winning probability decreases, and the utility one player can get out of this, um, out of this uh, contest, like the profit, one player can extract out of the competition uh, will converge like to zero. And this is to some extent in line with, uh, yeah, the competition process, like in the market structure of perfect competition. So when the whole contest is open, it will be the case that more and more players, like more and more sportsmen, will jump into this process, uh, into the competition, uh, because of the fact that in the beginning, the utility was positive, like the profit, the expected profit one player can extract out of the system is positive. And then more players will arrive because market entry is not subject to an entry bar barrier. And like all the players can enter. And in the end, it will be the case that profits will be uh, competed away. Profits will go to zero for like the individual player. Yeah, this uh, kind of stuff will also pop up in the next part of my lecture slides. We'll look at some uh, comparative static results. Um, so like in a first step, I would like to find out what happens if the number of players increase. So um, in the following part of the lecture, I will assume that the price money is normalized to one and the marginal costs are also normalized to one. If this is the case, then of course, equation nine will look much more nicer. Um, equation nine will become the optimal effort level is n minus one over n squared. And now we can answer the question, what happens if n increases? Uh, the following graph shows you what happens if the number of competitors n increase. It has an effect on the uh, optimal effort level of one individual. Uh, the optimal effort level will decrease. So this is one characteristic we have already seen in your numerical assignment. Let's check how we get to this graph. I'll once more look at Excel. Uh, I'll have to save this one and I'll stop this one from showing up. And I'll open a different one, uh, this one. So I want to create this kind of graph in Excel. Um, I assume that V is equal to one, M is equal to one. Our effort level is given as uh, D6 times F6 minus one divided by D7 times F6 squared. So I'm using 
like um, uh, the uh, optimal formula. It was given by formula number nine in your slide desk. So that's uh, the price money in D6 times N minus one, the number of players minus one, um, divided by M, the marginal cost, times N squared, number of players squared. Uh, the number of players N, uh, this is given in column number F. Therefore, I'm referring to F6 now because N should vary from N is equal to two uh, to the level of N is equal to 50. And then we can check how the effort level behaves when we copy this formula all the way down. Uh, the effort level decreases and afterwards uh, column F and column G are plotted and we get uh, this information here uh, that uh, the effort level of the individual will decrease in case that the number of competitors increases. I switch back to my lecture slides. Um, yeah. On the next slide, uh, this kind of stuff is also shown uh, in a yeah algebraic way, so we assumed the the price money is equal to one, m is equal to one. We arrive at equation eleven. We want to find out in an alg algebraic way what happens to the optimal effort level in case that the number of competitors increase. Uh, we can compute the derivative of equation eleven. With respect to n, uh, we perform some um, uh, modifications, and then we get the information uh, that this expression in equation 12 will be negative in case that n, the number of players, is larger than 2. So in case that the number of players is larger than 2, then del e del n will be negative and this implies that the optimal effort level of one individual will decrease uh, in case that the number of players uh, will increase so when the competition increases the individual effort level decreases Great. So what does it imply for the sports industry? What, what does this result imply for the sports industry? Can you come up with uh, a good idea like how this kind of result could impact the organization of a sports league, for example? I switch off my video signal. So from now on, it will be videotaped again. So now I would like to talk about an asymmetric two-player to lock contest. So n is equal to two. Asymmetric implies that the players are not identical. They differ with respect to marginal cost. However, in order to keep this model tractable, we have to restrict the number of players to two. So we are looking at a duopoly, like two players are competing against each other. Let's have a look at players one objective function. Uh, the utility of player one is given by the probability of winning. Uh, the fraction uh, represents the probability of winning. It is the effort level of player one divided by the sum of the effort level of player one and two. This gives us the probability. Then we multiply through by the uh, price money and we subtract the cost of player one. 
which is given by M1 times um, the effort level of player one. Now it is the case that we have to put an index one uh, to the marginal cost because we have to distinguish the marginal cost of player one and the marginal cost of player two. They are, they are, the two players are different with respect to the M variable, the marginal costs. So now once more, we have to find the first order condition, uh, derivative of the numerator times denominator minus derivative of the denominator times numerator divided by numerator squared. So let's differentiate the utility function of player one with respect to the effort level one. Uh, we have one E1 here. When we differentiate with respect to this E1, we get a V. So the, the V represents the derivative of the numerator. We multiply through by the denominator. And then when we differentiate the denominator, we have one E1 here. So we say minus, uh, minus derivative of the denominator times uh, the numerator E1 V is the numerator. Then we square the denominator and we have minus M1 here which stems from the cost part of this utility function. And now once more, we can put M1 on the right-hand side of this equation. Um, um, on the left-hand side, we have V times E1 with a positive sign and we V times E1 with a negative sign. So this stuff drops out so that the numerator becomes V times E2. V times E2 because the other parts pop up once with a positive sign, once with a negative sign. Great, we have one part uh, which will characterize the optimum, which is equation number 18. Uh, let's have a look at player's two objective function. Uh, utility function of player two is given by E2 over E1 plus E2. And this is the probability of one winning for player two. We multiply through by the price money and we subtract uh, the cost for player two, which is given by the marginal cost of player two times his effort level. Once more, the first order condition, and we get one optimality condition, which is pretty similar uh, to the player one uh, concept. Uh, in equation 21, we have an E1 here and an M2 there. So despite the fact that this uh, is the asymmetric scenario, to some extent, optimality condition 18 and 20, 21 uh, show up like some degree of symmetry. Um, in the next few steps, I would like to solve for the optimal effort of player one. And this will uh, need some time. So we will need some modifications in order to solve these two equations for like E1. In a first step, uh, we have to put the denominator on the right-hand side and the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So we put the term in brackets to the power of two on the right-hand side and M1 pops up in the denominator of this fraction. It's the same with respect to the second equation. So this one to the right-hand side, M2 to the denominator. Now it is the case that the right-hand side in equation 23 is the same. And we can equate this one and that one. 
this one and that one has to be equal. So we, we equate the two expressions, uh, v times e2 over m1 is equal to v times e1 over m2. Now we are in a first step solving this kind of stuff for the effort level of player two. And then we are inserting equation number 25 into one of these expressions because we want to solve in the end for the optimal effort level of player one. So we have to solve equation 24 in a first step for E2. The Vs pop up two times. Uh, they have to cancel out. And then we are putting M1 on the other hand side of the equation. We get E2 is equal to M1 times E1 over M2. And now the idea is um, that we are inserting this stuff like equation uh, 25 into equation 22, like this one. Uh, we are inserting the right-hand side of 25 into uh, 22. And then uh, this equation only depends on E1. Okay, um, yeah, this is once more highlighted on slide number 22. We are inserting the red stuff into the red part of equation 22. So we uh, end up at equation 26 after this modification. Um, this is the red part. And now we have to solve um, this stuff for E1. When you look at equation 26, then for the first time, we have one equation which does not depend on E2 anymore. So we, we can easily solve for the effort level of player one, and it just depends on M1, M2, and the price money V. So in a first step, uh, we are putting M2 uh, to the left-hand side. We are dividing by M2 and we are multiplying through by the term uh, in brackets and put this one to the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, in the next step, we can uh, put out of brackets E1 because we have an E1 here and an E1 there. Uh, because of the fact that the brackets are squared, also when we put E1 out of brackets, uh, it will be to the power of two. Now we get to equation 28. On the slide number 23, uh, you have on top, uh, the equation from the previous slide, no modification at all. Now we have one E1 here and E squared, E1 squared there. When we divide by E1, then we get V over M2 is equal to E1 and the term in brackets. And now we have to divide by this stuff. And then we have isolated the effort level of player one on one hand side of the equation. We get E1 is equal to V over M2 times one plus M1 over M2 in brackets uh, to the power of two. We can of course uh, solve also this problem for the optimal effort level of player two. Um, not too much interesting stuff will pop up. But now we can once more um, try to simulate what happens uh, to the effort level of player one 
um, in case that the marginal cost M1 change. Uh, one result will be that the higher the marginal cost of player one, the lower the effort level of player one. We assume that V is equal to one and M2 is equal to five. The next graph highlights the relationship between the effort level of player one and are the marginal cost of player one. And we can see here that when the marginal costs are increasing, then the effort level of player one will decrease. So when it becomes more costly for player one, then uh, the effort level will decrease. Um, we can also have a, or like, let's make a short stop here, uh, divide up the class into smaller breakout proceed. Like a few seconds ago, it was the case that we derived equation number 36. Uh, the op optimal effort level of player one depends on the price money, uh, on the marginal cost of player two, on the marginal cost of player one. Uh, let's use a numerical example in order to illustrate this result. We assume that the price money is equal to one and the marginal cost of player two is equal to five. And uh, we can create this kind of graph here and it indicates that the effort level of player one decreases when his marginal cost increase. How is this graph uh, created? Let's switch to Excel and I'll show it to you. So, um, make it a bit. Uh, Ansicht, Zoom. Okay. Uh, this is this is the the formula. Uh, this is the formula. E one is equal to uh, v over m two in brackets one plus m over m one squared. This is the optimal effort of player one, and it should depend on m one, the marginal cost of player one. So we assume that. Uh, um, the price money is equal to one and the marginal cost of player two is equal to five. This is the formula. Uh, the uh, price money is given in D6. We are freezing cell number D6 because we always want to refer to this uh, cell. Then we divide by in brackets uh, D7. This is marginal cost M2 of player two. And then once more in brackets, one plus F6. F6 is unfrozen. Uh, F6 is not frozen. It is the effort level of player one, M1, divided by D7, effort level of player two is frozen. And then uh, brackets, we square it, and once more brackets for the denominator. Uh, then we plug all the information down and we get this kind of graph here, which indicates that the optimal effort level of player one decreases when the marginal cost increase. Now you know how this graph was created uh, in Excel. The next graph I would like to create is related to slide number uh, 32. 
um, to some extent the slides are like in an irregular order. Um, so this is slide number 32. Uh, the question I would like to solve is how does the effort level of player one depend on the marginal cost of player two? We once more plot, uh, we once more want to plot the same equation, but now in the numerical example, uh, we hold m1 constant at five and we vary the m2 variable. How does the result look like? The result looks as follows. Um, that the optimal effort level of player one first increases in case that the marginal cost of player two increases. It reaches a maximum uh, at the effort level of player two. M2 is equal to um, five. There we have a maximum with respect to the effort level of player one. And afterwards, the effort level decreases again. In a first step, I would like to show once more in Excel how this graph was created. Okay. Uh, the price money is equal to one. M1 marginal cost of player one R equal to five. And this is held constant. And now we are going to vary uh, the marginal cost of player two. So the marginal cost of player two vary. Uh, they are here on the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, we have to compute the effort level of player one. This is given by the formula given here, like V uh, divided by M2. And now M2 is given in cell number F5. It is not frozen. What is frozen is M1. M1 is equal to five. Uh, this is given in cell number D6 and D6 is frozen. And then we divide by the effort level of player two. Uh, we square uh, the term in brackets and the last bracket sign is because we have to close the denominator. Then I copy uh, this information all the way down. And uh, when you look at cell number, um, Cell number G9 highlighted in red ink is that when M2 is equal to five and M2 is equal to M1, then the effort level of player one is the highest. So the, 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 the highest effort level of player one will be excelled in a situation where M2 is equal to M1 where the two players have the same strength. So the uh, graph reaches a maximum in case that M2 is equal to five. When M2 is equal to five is equal to M1, then the effort level of player one is the highest. So then uh, the effort level of player one reaches a maximum. What happens before? Like before, it's a case that the effort level of player one increase when the marginal cost of player two decrease. And then it will be the case that the effort level of player one will decrease in case that the marginal cost of player one increase even further. Like, why is that? 
why is the effort level of player one decreasing when the marginal cost of player two are increasing? Um, you have to think about how player two will behave. Um, on the previous slide, we have um, um, derived the insight that when the marginal cost of one player increase, the effort level of this player will decrease. So when, we, when the marginal cost of player two are like six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, it will be the case when the marginal cost of player two increase, our effort level of player two will decrease and this will decrease the winning probability for player two. And then player one has an incentive to train not as much as before because player one knows that player two is weaker. So player one is withholding effort because he knows that player two is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, player two is excel, uh, excelling less and less effort here. In the beginning, when the marginal cost of player two increase, it will be the case that also the effort level of player two will decrease, but the effort level of player one will increase uh, because of the fact that player one can increase his winning probability by accelerating more effort. Um, yeah, on the next few slides, we are also showing you these kind of results in, uh, in a formal way. So we are checking the uh, term uh, del E1, del M2, and how this kind of stuff looks like. Um, it goes over like three slides. Let's first check whether we have time. Uh, I'll stop the presentation and first check whether there are questions. Questions? We still have time. Uh, before I show you the um, formal result, uh, let's discuss question number three. Why should a sport organizer have an interest in having athletes of the same strengths with similar marginal costs compete against each other? This is like the question to the plenum right now. Well, basically, because we have seen that their effort levels then will be almost the same. And if the effort levels are the same, we could see that their skills are probably the same. And if it's like a close battle, then it will be most interesting for the viewers to watch. Uh, okay. Like, like you say, uh, when M1 is equal to M2, when the marginal costs are the same, then it's a close battle. Uh, the uncertainty of outcome is the highest. And then the spectators uh, wants to watch this kind of competition. Exactly. This is, this is like one uh, line of argumentation, which is okay. But one specific detail of this. Uh, of this result is not included in your line of argumentation. How do the effort levels look like when M1 is equal to M2?
when m1, which is given here, is equal to m2, then uh, the two players will excel uh, the highest amount of uh, effort, which implies that not only like the winning probabilities are, or yeah, the, yeah, the winning probabilities are identical, but we also see like a fast marathon. The two athletes are battling each other and we have a very high effort level. So like uh, when the marginal costs are the same, like we have two effects on the competition. One is the two athletes uh, will have the same strength and uh, they are reaching like the um what has seal venti goal line or like aim aim Aiming? no uh, goal goal line no start on seal my god finish finish line thanks eric Uh, mir, mir fiel immer nur der dänische Begriff ein, damit wir <lacht> nicht anfangen. <lacht> Sorry. Oh, it's videotaped. Yes, I made a mistake. Great. Um, so, it's not only that the two athletes will cross the finish line in more or less the very same point in time, but it's also the case that the two uh, Uh, athletes are very fast like the, when you run a mar marathon like those guys can run it in three hours easily and they arrive at the finish line in three hours but when 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 the two athletes have the same strengths they also have the uh, the um, when when the two athletes have the same marginal costs they also have the uh, incentive to to excel a very high effort level that they run this kind of stuff not in three hours but in two and that's a second component which makes this um, contest interesting for the spectator it's not only that the uncertainty of outcome is at max it's also the case that we see a very good competition a very fast competition Yeah, and this is uh, given when uh, M1 is equal to M2. Okay. Um, let's switch back and um, let's uh, derive this insight once more in a formal way. So we want to find out what happens to E1 in case that M2 increases. Uh, let's modify equation 37 before we differentiate. Uh, what do we do here? Like um, in equation 37, we have uh, brackets squared and we can use like the first bionimal method here, A squared plus B squared is equal to A squared, uh, A, a squared plus b in brackets to the power of two is equal to a squared plus two ab plus b squared. So we are using this in order to modify the term in brackets and the exponent is gone. Then we are multiplying through by m2 and we get m2 plus 2m1 Like this, M2 cancels out again that M2. And then we have like here an M2 instead of M2 squared. Now we can differentiate with respect to M2. And then I uh, will perform some modifications. 
uh, in a first step, we are writing here in the numerator of this fraction, uh, the one and the minus m1 squared over m2 squared on a common denominator. Uh, the same is performed here. We are writing uh, this stuff on a common denominator and the common denominator here is an m2 and the common denominator over there is an m2 squared. Um, in the next step, we can combine this m2 squared with this m2 squared, and we get an m2 to the power of four here. Uh, what else? Uh, we have a negative sign here, and we can insert the negative sign into this um, brackets. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, doch, uh, klar. <laughs> we can insert um, this negative sign into the brackets, and then uh, the uh, signs of m2 squared and m1 squared will flip around this negative sign will become positive and this positive sign will become negative. Uh, great. We have an m squared to the power of four here, and we also have an m squared to the power of four there. This m squared m2 to the power of four will cancel out against this m2 to the power of four. And we are left with m2 plus m1 to the power of four. Uh, then here, um, this looks a little bit like a squared minus b squared. And a squared minus b squared is nothing else than a plus b in brackets times a minus b in brackets. So we are splitting up this bracket into brackets. Copy paste to the next slide. And then we have... Um, m squared plus m in brackets and m yeah m2 plus m1 in brackets to the power of four this will cancel out so we get uh to the power of three here so let's interpret this stuff um del the f4 level differentiated with respect to m2 is positive as long as m1 is larger than m2. In this range, it is the case that if the marginal cost of player two increases, the effort level of player one increases. Uh, del, the effort level of player one with respect to m2 is smaller than zero is negative if m2 is larger than m1. Because when m2 is larger than m1, then this fraction will become negative and the whole expression will become negative. And in this range, if the margin cost of player two increases, the effort level of player one decreases. Uh, so this is what we see like here in this part uh, of the um, graph when M2 is larger than five. And when we have derived this result on slide number 31, we also know that when M1 is equal to M2, then there has to be a maximum with respect to E1. The effort level of player one is at max. Um, let's stop here. The, uh,